Hello again. Right, before I get to my latest project, uh, obviously the subject of this video, I have something in my brain I need to get rid of. So, <clears throat> la 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 la, me. You're back and you clicked on my link. Retro Komodo has done a new vid since the last time. The last time you heard me, being on holiday hasn't deterred me. You might think I have lots of time, thinking up words to come up with this rhyme. Really I haven't, I'm sorry to say, but Magical Trevor is stuck in my brain. I finished it now. My Ramsink. Ramsink. It's made out of copper and terribly thick. It's far too thick. Right, now I've got that out of my system, it's time to talk about what I'm doing. This thing with what passes for a fan I hold before you is the old cooler from my AGP HD 3850 graphics card. Underneath you'll see a copper square which covers the graphics card processor and eight thermal pads which used to be in direct contact with the memory chips of the card to help cool them down. Heat would then be directed into the metal underside of the cooler and the fan would then cool it down. This is a pencil. It's just a pencil. This bag of springy things are sprung push pins used for holding heat sinks on memory or processor chips, most often found on motherboards or on low powered graphics cards. These are some cheap clamps I'll be using to clamp things. Here is an ordinary sheet of A4 for scribbling a template. This is a 12.5cm by 12.5cm square sheet of 2mm thick copper, which will end up being that heatsink thing you saw dangling in the intro. I tell you what, 2mm thick copper is pretty tough. This is my drill. And this is my nibbler. No, they really are called that, nibblers. You can get a standalone nibbler as a proper power tool, or you can cheap out like I did and get one that goes on the front of a drill. But what the heck is a nibbler, you ask? Allow me. See that shiny bit there at the bottom going up and down as I twist the bit at the back? Well, you should see that it has a bit cut out of it, so as you push it into a sheet of metal it goes up and down and nibbles off a bit. Kind of like a jigsaw blade, but more nibbly. Maybe like a tiny mouth taking tiny bites out of whatever gets in its way? The drill turns this bit at the back and through the magic of gears it moves the pole up and down. A bit like a hungry sewing machine. So, what I'm doing now is positioning the paper over the graphics card after I've removed its fan and cooler and I'm drawing out the outline of where all the memory chips are. And then I'll use this as the template for cutting out my copper. I'm also marking out the holes I'll be using to attach it to the card so I don't forget to leave a bit extra there. Next, I need to test the coverage. It seems some people get an absurd amount of enjoyment from removing the protective film from things, so here I am having fun removing sticky back plastic. Fun or not, it's nice to see how clean and shiny it is underneath. Luckily, it looks as though I guessed just the right size piece to get. Yeah, it should do nicely. Now I just need to mark out the template and then I'm ready to cut. Or nibble. Or probably both. The nibbler is rated for 2mm thick copper so it should be okay? One template later and I'm ready to go out into the 33 degree sun of a heatwave Sunday in Worcester. This is where the clamps come in. The sci-fi fan in me just realised this design looks a bit like a glyph from a Stargate address. Now to get nibbling. It seems the best thing to do with this thing is to get going, then push into the metal. Not push it up to the metal and then try nibbling. This is what I'm calling the money shot. It's 
tell you what, nibbling makes for a really, really untidy cut. Later. Finally, one Stargate address glyph, I mean graphics card RAM sync. Obviously, I now have a lot of filing to do. This is the legacy of the Nibbler. These little needle sharp crescents go pretty much everywhere. On my garden path, no less. Oops. Five hours later. Not really. The filing is done plus some time with a rotary tool and various attachments, and here it is having a test fit. It sits nice and flat on the chips, so should do the job. It's a bit wonky though. Oh well. Now to drill some holes, but first I need to check what size bit to use to let the push pins through. This I think is a 3mm, and should do just fine. There we go! It very closely resembles the template, well close enough, and the holes have been polished up to remove any burrs. Now to take the thermal pads from the original cooler and pop them onto the memory chips of the graphics card. Yes, I know I should probably have bought new thermal pads, but I'm pretty sure these will be just fine. Now to push the push pins, set it down and clip them through. Don't push me! Push a push pop! There we go, nice and secure, and the spring tension is holding the copper down on the thermal pads just as I'd hoped. Of course I didn't bother measuring clearance for the cooler mounting bracket when I did the template, but with the mounting holes being in the very corners of the bracket, it should be just fine. Once all the old thermal compound is wiped clean, it's time to fit the cooler back on again. Yep, plenty of clearance. It's also blind luck the push bins don't get in the way of the cooler because of course I didn't measure anything. Really. Okay, time to test with an early version of Furmark at 1080p for four minutes. With my thermal camera pointing at the copper heatsink directly above one of the memory chips, the readings go from sitting at an idle temperature of 30.3 degrees up only 5 degrees to a maximum recorded 35.7 once we hit the highest temperature recorded in this 4 minute run. Here we can see hardware info was running in the background to record the temp of the graphics processor, and it got up to 69 degrees from idling at a mere 37. That's thanks mainly to the cooler I put on, but before the RAM sync was added, the idle temperature was 40 degrees. Right, now that's done, I need to start fitting the other coolers I bought to find the best one. I'll see you in the next video.